he gets there. The alternative media, Jerry. That's where you hear the truth. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. You're listening to The Morning Monarchy for Wednesday, September 21st, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Corrections Department. The solstice wasn't yesterday. It starts today. So we watch all of those things as we do our food, health, and environment coverage on your Food World Order edition of Your Morning Monarchy. Now, I noted at the beginning of the show, we're going to talk about some things that I have had had hands-on experience. I worked at a grocery store for six years here in Portland, Oregon, and I think actually their story somewhat mirrors what I'm going to roll out for you right here. Now, I should have known a big sellout was coming because, as we note, big events are often foreshadowed by a little smaller event two or three days prior. Whether by sync, sinister forces, coincidence, what have you. Last week, just about a week ago, Unilever looked to take over Honest Company for about a billion dollars. No, 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 not Honest Tea. They sold out to Coca-Cola a decade ago. This is Honest, Jessica Alba's company that she co-founded in 2012. Honest sells products aimed at young mothers, including household cleaners, hand sanitizers, and brightly patterned diapers. The company generates about $300 million in annual sales. Unilever is in talks to acquire the Honest Company, the organic personal care products business co-founded by actress Jessica Alba. According to the Wall Street Journal, the price is said to be north of $1 billion. That's for a company with a reported $300 million in annual revenue. The sums involved are truly impressive. But even more significant is what the potential sale represents. It's the latest in a string of acquisitions of eco-friendly, sustainable, and innovative companies by larger corporations. The bottom line reason for such deals is the larger company's distribution muscle and administrative backup that drives higher sales. Unilever bought Ben & Jerry's in 2000 and last year acquired the Dollar Shave Club. Group Danone owns 85% of Stonyfield Farm, Colgate Palmolive owns Tom's of Maine, and L'Oreal owns The Body Shop. In every case, the result has been the expanded delivery of better products to more consumers who are looking for healthier, higher quality goods and from companies that also operate with good business practices. I'm John Howell for 3PL Media. Well, he's very soft-spoken and interesting. I am actually always just trying to find good ways to give extra multimedia to pack into these shows. And again, everybody can make internet videos now. It's just difficult to find ones that aren't the computer robot voice. Is that really worth it? Is it worth it to do all that to put up a YouTube video that three people watch and all of them go, fuck, you're not the thing I want to watch? Sidebar. So Jessica Alba sells out her honest company. And again, I you know, nothing nothing sounds like honest when you think hand sanitizer and brightly colored diapers. So that's one sellout to Unilever in the span of one week. But that's not all. Unilever will buy 7th Generation, a U.S. baker of green home and personal care goods, it said on Monday, its latest deal aimed at boosting the faster-growing part of its business. Vermont-based 7th Generation's products include recycled tissues, organic tampons, and dish soap with plant-based ingredients. Its focus on sustainability echoes that of Unilever, which has tried to put environmental concerns at the forefront of its business, because if you remember the first sentence in this article, it's the faster-growing part. Because Unilever really cares about your health. Unilever has said its more sustainably minded brands such as Dove Soap and Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream outperform its other brands which range from Lipton Tea to Knorr Soups. In recent years, the company has divested slow-growing food brands and acquired higher margin, higher growth skincare and personal care brands. Financial terms of Monday's deals were not discussed, though Unilever said 7th Generation had a 2015 turnover of more than $200 million, having seen double-digit compound annual growth over the last decade. Unilever announced deals for Dollar Shave Club in July and Blue Air Air Purifiers in August, following purchases of skincare brands including Murad and Dermalogica. 
What's up with these fragrances? Fiji Funk, Cabo Clean, Siberian Sunbeam, Pork? Get real. Seventh generation, real fragrances, really clean. Really using celebrities to push their products. So here's the background. I worked at an organic grocery store here in Portland called New Seasons Market from 2006 to 2012. When I left in 2012, it was go work at Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis on a nationally syndicated radio show. I worked at this grocery store during the economic collapse slash food revolution 2.8. Everybody was realizing their food was poison and they were changing their minds about what they bought. I saw this happen on the floor. I suppose it's it's funny in one way. I was at the ground zero of the sort of food revolution before I went to ground zero of radio. 7th Gen was always one of the better companies that we carried. Now, this store, its success in the city was always, it didn't just carry expensive organic stuff. You could walk in and get a Coke and a Snickers if you wanted as well. But the more local, organic, sustainable, better products were given better shelf space. So 7th Gen pretty much makes household items, toilet paper, tissues, cleaners, soaps, and junk. So let's go to their website, 7thGeneration.com, because I actually had to hear this story from Reuters India this past Monday. And I head on over to 7th Generation Twitter account, crickets. They haven't told their audience. So I, of course, immediately started to lambast them. Really, 7th Generation? You're selling out to Unilever just like Dollar Shave Club and Ben & Jerry's and the rest? Oh, I guess Bayer maybe wasn't offering enough money. So then my question became, when will 7th Gen come clean and announce to their Twitter followers that they sold out to Unilever? Hashtag come clean has been their long-running campaign featuring celebrities like Ellen DeGeneres and Maya Rudolph. Because nothing says sustainability like spending a bunch of money for actors. And we've seen this time and time and time again from companies that sell out. Now that we've got this 2020 hindsight, we can look and we'll go to 7thGeneration.com and see that finally, after a good 24 hours, 7th Generation finally announced that they were selling out to Unilever. I've got a fantastic screen grab, and again, it'll be in the show notes, everything we say and play included in the show notes. I've got a nice screen grab of when they finally started to reply to all the shit they were getting on Twitter. No, 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 we will continue to be a B Corp. We're the second B Corp to join the Unilever family. We have every intention of retaining our presence in Vermont and continuing to grow our business. We're sorry you feel that way, Alexa. Nothing about our products, standards, stance on animal rights, and mission will change. Nothing about our stance on animal rights changes. No new taxes. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. So we hop back finally... They put their press release out, bringing our mission to the world from President and CEO John Replogle. In 1989, a small group of environmentally concerned visionaries created a new type of household product and a different kind of company to sell it. The products were renewable and recycled, and the business itself took responsibility for blah, blah, blah. Today marks the next chapter of our story as we enter into an acquisition agreement with Unilever, Ranked number one, yada, yada, yada. Again, you can get this whole press release of what they're doing. Now, isn't it interesting that he says, in 1989, a small group of environmentally concerned visionaries. And then, by the time you're in the second paragraph, he says, we enter into the next chapter of our story. Now, if you go to a different page on SeventhGeneration.com and learn about John Rep. Luggle, he joined Seventh Generation in... March 2011. He came from Burt's Bees, the leading earth-friendly natural personal care products company where he served starting in January 06 as president and CEO. What what did Burt's Bees do in that period? Oh, that's right. They sold out to Clorox. 
Prior to Burt's Bees, John spent three years at Unilever, where he managed the skin care division and helped to launch the Real Beauty campaign for Dove and establish the Dove Self-Esteem Fund. So good, touchy-feely, propaganda bullshit. So what you discover here is, John Replugle is a Unilever beast and infiltrated Seventh Generation only five years ago. What did he do before that? He worked at other companies that were sold out to major chemical companies like Clorox and Unilever. This is what they do. This is what he's done. He infested a company five years ago, having, of course, nothing to do with the hippies from 25 years ago that started a new company. And that's how this rolls. Whether you're talking about music, whether you're talking about art, whether you're talking about food, whether you're talking about soap. The grassroots innovate, and the big boys can't, so they must buy it up. They must co-opt it. They must have it absorbed. Puts the lie to the... We're just the capitalist free market, right? No, not at all. Not even close. They just buy up their competition. So what's interesting is I can make a pretty tight comparison between what I see and what I just realized that happened at 7th Gen is the same thing that's going to happen to New Seasons Market. You know who they brought in in around 2012? After all the original families that started the company 20 years ago all sold and left because they didn't want to be there anymore? They brought in Wendy Colley, former Starbucks CEO. And then they took on millions and millions and multi-millions of investor capital from Endeavor Capital. And they started to immediately go against their original mission statement, opening stores in places they never said they would, carrying products they never said they would, burning bridges with places that were part of their main mission statement. This is what's going to happen to the New Seasons Market here in the Pacific Northwest. Again, it was just supposed to be Oregon when the family started it in the 90s. But now Starbucks is driving the train. And I can see how they're driving a the train. I can even go into the store now and realize it's not the same experience. You can pretty much go anywhere and realize it's not the same experience. I've talked many, many times before. Probably one of the best ways is to not take part in a lot of this. So it's easy to not go to the churches and the banks. It's going to get more difficult to not go to their grocery stores. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Filato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.